السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله Brothers and sisters in Islam, we thank the Almighty Allah for giving us another opportunity to be here. We thank Him for His mercies that He's bestowed upon us. We bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except the Almighty Allah. We also bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Whosoever the Almighty Allah guides is really guided. And anybody who goes astray has nobody to blame but themselves. Today is a Friday, the 11th day of Sha'ban. 1,444 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It also corresponds, I believe, with the third day of March 2023. Alhamdulillah, our souls, our spirits, and our bodies are preparing to meet the month of Ramadan. And as usual, it's a very, very important time of the year for Muslims, whatever we find ourselves. But then again, it is important that we prep ourselves for this month that is coming. And as a Muslim, what is important and what the Almighty Allah really wants, what demands from us is consistency. It's very important. In as much as we will have shortcomings, in as much as we will have you know, trials and tribulations and some forgetfulness, at every point in time, we try as much as possible to, you know, to pinch ourselves and then you know come back onto the path 
That is why in Surah Al-Fasil, the Almighty Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُ تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُ وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاؤُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورٍ رَحِيمٍ The Almighty Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ Very those who say, we believe in the Almighty Allah, or the Almighty Allah is our Lord, we've accepted the Almighty as our Lord, ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُ After making this statement, they were steadfast, they were resolute on the path of Islam. It's very, very important. In Islam, it doesn't suffice you just to say, I believe in the Almighty Allah, and then that's the end of the day. No. Al-Imanu qawlul wa'amal. Iman in Islam is statement and then works. Islam is not a theoretical religion. It is a practical religion. You learn, and then you go into the laboratory, and then you practice Islam. So, in the ladina qalu rabbun Allah, verily those who say, we believe in the Almighty Allah, thumma staqamu, and then they are resolute, they are steadfast, tatanazzalu alayhimu al-malaika. When it is time for them to die, the Almighty Allah sends angels unto them in their rooms. And it's as if these people will ask the angels, who are you? And the angels will tell them, Allah tahzanu wa la tahzanu, Allah tahafu wa la tahzanu. Don't be scared concerning where you are going to, don't despair that you are living behind a family. Don't worry that you are living behind young kids. Don't worry you are living behind a wife. And then it's as if you ask them, who are you? And they tell you, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاؤُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا We are your lovers. We are your brothers. We are your companions في الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا In this dunya. When you are passing through the cold to come to the masjid for fajr, who are with you? When you are going out there to visit your sick brother, who are with you? When you went out there to help that old woman who were with you, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Don't despair, even in Akhira, who will be with you. Hassan al-Basri was asked, مَا سِرِّ زُهْدِكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا What is the secret of your aestheticism in this dunya? He said four things. عَلِمْتُ عَنَّ عَمَلِي لَا يَقُومُ بِهِ غَيْرِي فَاشْتَغَلْتُ بِهِ Number two, عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ رِزْقِي لَا يَأْكُلُهُ غَيْرِي فَاطْمَعَنَّ قَلِّي Number three, عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ مُطَّلِعٌ عَلَيَّ فَاسْتَحْيَيْتُ عَنْ يَرَانِ عَلَى الْمَعْصِيَةِ Number four, عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ حَقٍّ فَتَزَوَّدْتُ لِلِقَانِ He said, عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ عَمَلِي لَا يَقُومُ بِهِ غَيْرِي فَاشْتَغَلْتُ بِهِ He said, my responsibilities that the Almighty Allah has bestowed upon me, I know that nobody is going to do them for me. So I need to get up and do it. The ibadah that we are doing, nobody is going to do any ibadah for you. Understand that. All of us have been programmed by the Almighty Allah and given a task. And we are supposed to fulfill those tasks. So understand this. Nobody is going to do your ibadah for you. Not your father, not your wife, not your husband. It's not going to happen. Whatever you do, you are held accountable for it. Your father can be the biggest sheikh in the community. If you are not a steadfast Muslim, the Almighty Allah doesn't care. He told his daughter, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Fatima, to salini ma shikti min dunya Ask me whatever you want in this dunya. But the moment we go to the akhirah, la ugni anki min Allahi shayha, I will not be able to provide for you anything that the Almighty Allah has not provided for you. If the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving this statement to his daughter Fatima, what about you and I? When that makhzumiya woman stole and they were supposed to cut her hand, what did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell Usama to bin Zayd? He told him, لَوْ سَرَقَتْ فَاطِمَ لَقَطَعْتُ يَدَهَا If Fatima has been the one who stole, I would have cut off her hand. So Islam teaches us responsibility. يَا إِيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِكُمْ نَارَ all these who believe, protect yourselves and your families from the hellfire. كُلُّكُمْ رَاعِي وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ All of us are shepherds and the Almighty Allah is going to question us upon him to the flock that he gave us. وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَعَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَائِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْكُولًا Understand this, there's going to be accountability on the day of Qiyamah. What our eyes look at, 
what our ear listen, where our legs take us. There's going to be a question on you of Qiyamah. That didn't I, the Almighty Allah, and the day that the Almighty is going to seal our mouths, and then our hands, our legs are going to speak on the day of Qiyamah. So let's be mindful of how we carry ourselves. You don't make any statement except there are two angels who are recording whatever we are doing. So Hassan al-Basri said, I know that my responsibility, nobody is going to take care of it apart from me, so I'm busy with it. Umar bin Khattab one day was going to the streets of Medina at night, checking the wealth of the community. In the depth of the night, he saw fire kindling someone. He got closer and then he realized it was a woman and then some kids. And then there was a pot on the fire. And then he asked her, what's going on? She said, I'm cooking food for my kids. He said, at this, night, at this time of the night, what are you cooking for them? She said, I already have water and stones in there. The kids would think I'm cooking for them. They will wait for the food. The food will never be ready and they will sleep like that. And then he asked her, what is your complaint? She said, Allah, Allah, fi Umar. amrana wa anna. My complaint is about Umar. He is our leader, but he has forgotten about us. And she didn't know who she was speaking to. Umar said when she made that statement, it felt as if a spear was pushed into his heart. And then he told her, wait. And then he went to the storehouse. And then they told the security officer, get me these bags, bag of food, whatever. And then he carried them on his, on his back. And the security officer said, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, let me carry it for you. And then he told him, Thaqilatka ummuk, a'anta tahmil anni dhunubi yawm al-Qiyamah. Are you the one who is going to carry for me my sins on the day of Qiyamah? Let me carry my sins. Umar carried it. And then he came where they are. And then he cooked food for them. They ate. And then the kids played. And then she told him, Anta ahakku bil khilafati bin Umar. You deserve the position more than Umar. She didn't know who she was speaking to. And then he told her, don't worry. Tomorrow morning, come to the presidential palace. Come to the office. I'm going to take whatever, you know, oppression Umar has done against you and then pay you back. When he left, he hid behind a structure. And then his friend, Abdurrahman bin Auf, told him, Ya Amir al-Mu'min, al-Bart al-Shaheed, hayya bina. Amir al-Mu'min, let's go home. It's very cold. He said, I came and found them crying. I want to leave when they are laughing. When the kids laughed, Umar bin Khattab left and then he went back home. Abdurrahman bin Auf said, on Fajr that night or that morning, I couldn't differentiate Umar's crying from his recital in the Salah. Umar said, لَوْ عَثَرَتْ بَقْلَةٌ فِي الْعِرَاقِ لَسَعَلِ لِلَّهُ عَنْهَا لِمَا لَمْ تُصْلِحْ لَهَا الطَّرِيقَ يَا Umar. If a donkey was going to stumble on its path in Iraq, whilst I am in Medina, on the day of Qiyamah, the Almighty Allah is going to question me, why didn't I pave the street for that donkey? Brothers and sisters, we have a lot on our plates. We have a lot of responsibilities, and especially fathers in this community that we find ourselves. The Almighty Allah, when he said, al rijalu qawwamun ala nisa he didn't give you a title on your head, he gave you a responsibility. It's a responsibility. And if you make good use of that responsibility and then you pass the test, you get a greater reward on the day of Qiyamah. But if you shake that responsibility, then you have a serious question to answer on the day of Qiyamah. We don't mention Allah save that us. The second point, he said, He said, I know very well, surely enough, that my risk, my sustenance, no one else is going to take that sustenance away from me. So I'm at peace. It's very, very important. Let's understand this. That whatever the Almighty Allah has decreed for you is never going to miss you. لَوْ رَكِبَ بْنُ آدَمَ السَّحَابَ فِرَارًا مِنْ رِزْقِ لَرَكِبَ الرِّزْقُ الْبَرْقَ لِيَقْعَ فِي فَمِ بْنِ آدَمِ If the son of Adam climbs or rides the, 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 the clouds, trying to run away from his risk, the risk will mount the lightning and then overtake Ibn Adam and then get to him. What the Almighty Allah has written for you is for you. 
Don't look at what other people have. Be content with what you have. Your one jailbag and your one kufi is enough for you. Whatever you have, someone lives in a multi-million dollar mansion, you are renting. That's what the Almighty Allah has decreed for you. That is going to give you peace of mind. But if you say no, you want to live in the same house as some other person is living, that is the first step of being a corrupt person. We, the soul, our, our, our souls and our desires don't want to humble themselves and then accept the decree of the Almighty Allah. The food that we eat once a day, some of us are not okay with that. But then understand, Poverty is better for you if money is going to make you go wayward or be someone who has gone astray. فَإِنْ أَبَتْ If you don't want that, فَجَمِيعُ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَا يَكْفِيهَا Even if you give you everything in the world, you will not be satisfied. هِيَ الْفَنَاعَةُ فَحْفَظُهَا Contentment. فَحْفَظُهَا Protect her. تَكُنْ مَلِكًا You be a king. لَوْ لَمْ تَكُنْ لَكَ إِلَّا رَاحَةُ الْبَدَنِ If the only thing you have is your health, that is the best for you. وَانْظُرْ إِلَى مَنْ مَلَكَ الدُّنْيَا دِيَ أَجْمَعِهَا Look at the person who has held the whole world and what is in her. The day he was going to Qiyamah, apart from cotton wool in his nose and in his straw, where did he go with? The university that I study in, in Niger, the late king of Saudi Arabia, Malik Abdullah, rahimahullah, gave the university $65 million to build a new complex, a new campus. The day Abdullah died, and that is from his own money, not from the coffers of, the, of, of Saudi Arabia, his own personal money, $65 million. The day Abdullah died, he was put on the shoulders of his own kids and then he was buried just like anybody else. You saw the death of Sheikh Khalifa of Dubai. Min al burj ila al qabr. From the tower to the grave. So understand what the Almighty Allah has given you. That is what is for you. How, 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 whatever properties you have, on the day that you're living the dunya, you're not taking anything with it. When a baby is born, the hands or the fists are clenched like this. But when you die, your hands will be spread out. The scholars are saying when you are born, your clenched fist means you want to grab everything. You, you just came in, so you want to grab everything. On the final show, you couldn't grab anything, so your hands are empty. That's the reality of the dunya. They say when we are born, Adhan is called, but no salah is performed. When we die, salah will be performed without Adhan. And the scholars are saying the secret is that it tells you that your life is between Adhan and Yekama. That's it. That's the secret. Your life is only the time that Imam walks in, he says, it's tawu, and then the Adhan is mentioned, or the Yekama is read, and then he says, Allah Akbar. From the moment the Adhan is mentioned to the time that he says, Allah Akbar, that's how long you are going to live in this dunya. That's how when you are born, the Adhan is mentioned, but no Salah. When you die, there's going to be a salah without Adhan. The Adhan was mentioned the day you were born. Brothers and sisters, let's be content with what we have. Young men, that you are listening to us, let's be content with what we have. When you see our fathers who are businessmen and then they own mansions, they own cars, they own money, they went through a lot before they got there. If you want to get there, you also have to go through that place. But if you say, no way, you're going to overtake, you're going to crash. And when you crash, you're going to die. I put him at a small step for Allah. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قوة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا هذا الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أبو الله ورسوله ما بعد We are speaking about propping ourselves for Ramadan We spoke about being steadfast with Almighty Allah And then we brought Al-Hasan al-Basri and then his advice that he's given us the first statement was that he understands and he knows that his responsibilities are not going to be taken over by somebody else, so he is busy with his responsibilities. The second point is that he knows and understands that his risk is with Almighty Allah, and nobody is going to take his risk away from him. Understand that. وَرْضَ بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكَ تَقُنْ أَبْنَ النَّاسِ Accept what the Almighty Allah has given you the share that the Almighty Allah has given to you on this dunya, accept it, you will be the wealthiest of people. Most of the times you hear that this celebrity has committed suicide. This celebrity has committed, almost every year you hear celebrities committing suicide. They have multi-million dollar mansions across the world, they have private jets, they have all this money, but then they are killing themselves. Why? There is no kana, there is no contentment. But you as the Muslim, you are content. And that's the discipline that Islam brings. And then you need to look at it deeper to drink more of that fountain. Because this dunya is a fleeting experience. Cars that were manufactured in 1920 or 1940s, when you bring them now, nobody wants them. Someone killed someone to get that car in the 1940s. If he's alive today to come and see the kind of has we have, he will weep blood because he done something for something that is worthless or useless. Let's be content with what we have. The second point, the third point, he said, I know that the Almighty Allah sees me all the time. So I'm ashamed that the Almighty Allah will look at me and then he sees me committing a sin. My brothers and sisters, whether we like it or not, we are human beings and then we are going to commit errors. We are going to sin. But then try as much as possible to move away from the kabair. The major sins. Move away from them. Make sure you come to the akhirah with the Almighty Allah with minor sins that this Tegufar can clean them. So long as we understand that we are going to commit sins, then it is perfect that we have at the back of our minds that we are going to do istighfar all the time. A tawbah all the time. Istighfar all the time. All the time. Don't go a day without having istighfar. The Sahaba said, we sit with the Prophet Muhammad in a moment and then he's done istighfar between 70 and 100 times. Not in a day, in a moment. At a sitting, they just say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. <coughs> 70, 100 times. Another moment, they sit somewhere, they hear me, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. But the problem is that we, we don't even realize that we are committing the sins. We don't even acknowledge that we are committing the sins. Qaswatul Qalb. The hearts have become so, so, so caked and so strong and, and very stony that the words of the Almighty Allah doesn't, work, doesn't penetrate our hearts. And sometimes when the Imam mounts the pulpit to teach us, we think that you know, sometimes the Imam is wasting time. Or when the Imam reads a long surah in the Salah, that's all you hear, we keep on chuckling in the Salah. Where are you going? <clears throat> Whatever you want outside there, this is the office that the approval comes from it. This is where the approval is made. So if you leave the approval office and then you go around riding around, what are you doing? <coughs> I'm not saying come and spend 24 hours here. No. What I'm saying is that when you, have, when you come here, have quality time with all mental health. Let the 10, 15, 20 minutes you come here be quality time with Almighty Allah. The Almighty Allah is not interested in quantity, He's interested in quality. 
That is why our istighfar is not about making billions of istighfar a day, but then what's the quality of those istighfar? You come into our message, that's a plus, 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 a Imam Ali came into the masjid and then he found someone doing istighfar the way you and I do istighfar. And then he told him, Istighfar, okay, hada ya hitaju lel istighfar. This is your istighfar. You need to do another istighfar so that the Almighty Allah will clean this one because this one is a sin. The one that you are doing is a sin. So around the day we say, I've done dhikr, but then. The Uma Chala is not accepting my dua. I've done dua. The Uma Chala is not accepting my dua. You're doing dhikr, and then someone calls you, and then you tell Allah, pause, let me receive this call. That's what we do. You're doing istighfar, and then a call comes here, and you say, this is an important call. Hey, this call that you're doing, that's the call. The dhikr, that you're doing, that's the call. This is no call. That's what we do. And along the day, we, we are asking, why is Allah not accepting my dua? When you are not concentrating in your dua, when you are not concentrating in your dhikr, when you've not given your heart and soul to the Almighty Allah in your ibadah, sometimes the Imam says, well, darling, and then the amin of the congregation vibrates, that's what you ask, I mean, salah. No, where's your concentration? Let's take our time and do istighfar. It's very, very important. One day, Hassan al-Basri was in the masjid teaching, and then someone came in and said, Ya deen, uh, there's no marriage. He said, Alayka bistighfar. Another person comes in and said, Ya deen, the economy is very bad. He said, Alayka bistighfar. Another person came in and said, Ya taqiyya deen, there are no kids. We married, there are no kids. He said, Alayka bistighfar. Someone came in and said, I'm a farmer, there are no rains. He said, Istighfar. After they've left, the student asked him, Yata Qiyadin, what happened? All these people came with different problems, but he gave all of them istighfar. He said, Have you two people read the Quran and the Almighty Allah said, Fakul to Sakfiru Rabbakum in Nahu Kana Gafara, Yusili Sama Alekum Midrara, Wa Yudilukum Bia Muadin Wabanin, Wa Yajalakum Janatin, Wa Yajalakum Anhara, Malakum, Dr. Tunali Lahi Wakara, Wakal Khalakum Atwara. Why don't you go back to the Almighty Allah? If you need kids, it's take far. If you need businesses, it's take far. If you need money, it's take far. If you want a wife, it's take far. If you're looking for a husband, it's take far. The problem is that our it's take fars need it's take far for him to be a better it's take far. Finally, he said, Alim to Anna Liqa Allah Yuhaq. Of all the four points, this is the most dangerous one. علمت أن لقاء الله حق فتزودت للقائي. He said, I know surely one day I will meet Allah. So I need to get provisions ready for that meeting. How prepared are you? And the frightening thing of this meeting is that there is the scheduling is not done with you. No, there is no meeting with you to tell you you are going. You're, okay, we are meeting at 3 p.m. in the car park. There's nothing like that. That's the frightening thing about it. At any moment, you can leave. At any moment, you're going to go. If you are in this masjid and then you know you are guaranteed Salatul Asr, raise your hand. If you are here today and then you are sure that I am going to pray Salatul Asr, raise your hand. Let me put my hand down. None of us is guaranteed that. Then why the play? Why the forgetfulness? Why the envy? Why the greed? Why the jealousy? Why the dislike? Why the enmity? You come into the masjid with your own brother because you're out on talking terms with him. If he's in the same soft with you, you move to another soft. And then you are here, you ask the Almighty Allah to forgive you, but then you have a problem with your brother and there's no forgiveness between the two of you. How do you expect the Almighty Allah to forgive you? <coughs> Ibrahim al-Adham was sitting in, this, in the city. And a young man came. 
Then he said, Ya Sheikh Ain Al Amar, where is the latest neighborhood that everybody is moving towards? Everybody wants to have, you know, you know, there are, there are neighborhoods in the city where you want to have a condo, you want to have you know, an apartment there. So he came and said, Ya Sheikh Ain Al Amar, where is the, you see, the latest neighborhood, expensive, you know, exquisite, you know, high class place? I want, you know, I'm new in the city, I need to have, you know, a very nice neighborhood to live. He said, Follow me. They walked. You know, walking, they passed through the city center. They went. He said, Ah, Sheikh, where is the latest neighborhood? He said, Oh, it's 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 ahead. Let's go. All of a sudden, he found himself in the cemetery, the graveyard. He said, Yeah, Sheikh, I said I need the latest neighborhood where I'm going to, you know, stay. And you bring me to the to the cemetery. He said, Kullu ladina hunak sayarjuna ila huna, wa la yujad ahad huna yarti ila hunak. He said, all those who are here in the cemetery, all those people you see over there, all of them are going to move eventually here. They're going to come here. But nobody is going to leave here and go back there. So if you need a new neighborhood, build your home here right now. How have we prepared that three-bedroom apartment that we're going to live in? What kind of infrastructure have we sent there? A young man bought a house during the time of Imam Ali. And then he came to Imam Ali and he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, muridu an taqtuba li aqta shiran baits. I just want you to write a certificate for me to show that I bought this house. Imam Ali looked into his face and then he realized that the dunya has covered his face. And then he wrote, لَقَدْ اشْتَرَى مَيِّتٍ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِينَ دَعَى فِي بَلَدِ الْمُذْنِبِينَ وَشِدَّةِ الْغَافِلِينَ he said a dead person has bought a house in a dead neighborhood in a community full of evil people and sinners. That building has four layers or four steps or four boundaries. The first step is death. The the second, second step is the graveyard. وَالْحَدُّ الثَّالِثِ يَمْتَهِ إِلَى الْآخِرَةِ The third level is going to the Akhirah. And the fourth level is إِمَّا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ أَوْ إِمَّا إِلَى النَّارِ The young man said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, طَلَبْتُ مِنْكَ أَقْدَ شِرَاءِ الْبَيْتِ وَكَتَبْتَ لِي أَقْدَ شِرَاءِ الْمَقْبَرَةِ So Amir al-Mu'mineen, I, 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 I requested you know, a certificate for a house and then you gave me a certificate of a graveyard. And then he told him, وتورنا لخراب الدحر نبنيها لا تركننا إلى الدنيا وما فيها فإن الموت لا شك يفنينا ويفنيها فأمن لدار غد رضوان خازنها والجار أحمد والرحمن ناشيها قصورها ذهب والنسك طينتها والزعفران وحشيش نابت فيها النفس تبكي على الدنيا All of us are crying over the dunya Why are we here? We are looking for dollars That's why we are here most of us left our countries to come to America for the beautiful dream of America to make dollars. That's the fact. That's the truth. That's why we're here. Why don't you stay in your country to make the money? Because no, you're not going to get the amount of money that you want in life back in your country. So you came to a country where the opportunities are there. That's the truth. Enough to double key and the dunya. All of us are running around the dunya. And I say all of us, I mean all of us, me included. Give me one million dollars today and think, you think I will not leave? وَقَدْ عَلِمَتْ أَنَّ السَّلَامَةَ فِيهَا تَرْكُ مَا فِيهَا But all of us know that the peace of mind in this dunya is living the dunya. All of us know that. لَا دَارَ لِلْمَرْءِ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ يَسْكُنُهَا None of us have a place to stay in the akhirah إِلَّا الَّتِي كَانَ قَبْلَ الْمَوْتِ يَبْنِيهَا Except the houses that we built in this dunya before we went to the akhirah. When Almighty Allah said, Ya Ayladina Amanu Taqullaha or Tanzur Nafsu Ma Qaddamat Li Ghadin It is not Saturday that Almighty Allah is, is talking about. It is the Akhirah. What provisions have we sent to the Akhirah? What provisions? 
It's very, very important. Understand that la mahala, there is no escape route for you. The route to the akhirah is a one-way route. There is no U-turn. There is, there is no exit. When you hit that road, you're gone. One of the salaf told his sons, Ya Bunaya, understand, the first day you touch the earth, that is the closest you are to the akhirah. You know, sometimes I see Muslims on social media. Today is my birthday. I'm plus one. You are lying. It's minus one. I'm 40 years old. I thank the Almighty Allah for giving me, for increasing my life. So it's an increase. If you're going to live for 60 years in this dunya, and then you are 39 today, next year you'll be 40. How many more left? 20. The following year will be 41. How many more left? 19. You're going to die. That's the fact. The Almighty Allah didn't bring us to the dunya to come and play and joke and jump around. No. We are here for a purpose. We are here for a purpose. My final statement of taking much of your time, forgive me, is Ask yourself, and let me ask myself, the lifestyle that we're living now, when you die today, are you sure you will make Jannah? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has been dead for more than 14 centuries. But then he lived for only 63 years. My question to us, if I live for 70 years, and then I die, and I'm put in the grave for 500 years. Are you sure? Am I sure? My ibadah for 70 years will give me tranquility in the grave for 500 years. It's a question we need to ask ourselves. Let's prepare. The meeting with Almighty Allah is true. Let's prep ourselves for Ramadan. It's an opportunity that the Almighty Allah has given us. Some of us might not see Ramadan. But then when we see Ramadan, let's have this at the back of our minds. That it's a workshop that the Almighty Allah has presented for us. For us to renew our covenant with the Almighty Allah. ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسن وفي الآخرة حسن قنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وعبنا لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك جامع الناس بلا ريب فيه إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد سرحانك اللهم بحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستكفرك ونتوب إليكم وإلى صلاتكم الحمد لله